Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's me. It's Irish guy. It's Pastor Jesse. I want to welcome you to the channel. I am just getting in um, from some um, some work on those tables that I showed you, and I was digging into my book, and I was laying on my bed reading here, and I, I, I had to share this. I just have to share this for the optimism of us and our faith. And it says this in the, uh, I'm, this is the book called On Being a Pastor now, and I'm in the back half, and this is the responsibility to lead, about the responsibility of being a leader, right? So it says we lead by keeping our head in all situations, 2 Timothy 4, 5. All church fellowships go through periods of difficulty, right? Various assaults of, the, of Satan and practical issues like depleted numbers through the movement, the population, redevelopment of an area will prompt someone to imagine that everything is going wrong and that they will panic. Such reactions put spiritual leaders under pressure and they will not be immune from imagining the worst possible consequences of seeing all the kinds of potential dangers, right? And we're not immune to that. The spiritual leaders must not overreact, but rather they must fix their sights on what is right rather than what seems expedient. They must aim to steer a straight course. Whatever is happening around them, difficulties like storms will pass. The church, amen, the people, like a ship in a storm, have passed through such before and survived. The only real danger is abandoning the ship when there is no need to do so. Amen. Praise God. We lead by recognizing that there are occasions when we must positively exert ourselves to lead. When people panic, we must be quick to give reassurance and provide good reasons for not doing so. Amen. Even if it's to ourselves. Praise God. When the church flounders in its missions, we must stir ourselves up to show that way in which we she shall remedy failures. Amen. Much leadership is low-key and must unconsciously exercised, and almost unconsciously exercised. But there are vital moments when we need to say to ourselves, God's people require leadership at this point, and I must clearly provide it because it is to this that God has called me. There will also be occasions when we will need to exert ourselves in our leadership of those who share leadership with us and I'll end with this it says we should lead through teaching aptness to teach is essential to leadership in 1st Timothy 3.32 or 3.32 1st Timothy 3.2 3.2 goodness gracious our teaching function enables us to exercise constant leadership a leadership of which people may be scarcely aware at times if we expound and apply the scriptures we urge God's people beginning with ourselves, amen, to live lives worthy of God who has called us into his kingdom in 1 Thessalonians 2.12. I could not wait to share that with you guys. Now that is exactly um, parallel with what I'm going through and what we're going through as believers and amen. And as a pastor, I'm being called to lead and I want to do that and I want to do it in a good way. So thank you for letting me share that with you. I'm going to get back to work. God bless you all in the name of Jesus. Please be well today and have a safe and sober Friday. Be good. Be well. Please be good out there and nice. God bless you all.